Okay, Jonah gave us the um, uh, some of the uh, nuts and bolts of the of the car. It's general history. Um, it's recent history. It's been here at Owl's Head Transportation Museum uh, back in the late 70s. I don't know if Jonah mentioned that or not. Um, it was here when I got here in 82 and uh, was one of my more favorite things, cars to play with. Uh, one of the reasons was it was pretty reliable to start up. I can remember back then, I've told a couple of you this, but we used to use this truck to collect the uh, trash at the end of events. We'd go around and bag up the trash and throw it in the back and take it out there. We didn't do that very long because people started looking at us a little sideways. Um, but this was 1910 Buick truck. I didn't even know Buick made trucks till I got here and saw this one. And uh, chances are good you guys are in the same same position, didn't know Buick made trucks. Um, they made two models of trucks in uh, each year that they, that they made this style of truck, as far as I can figure. Uh, there was a heavy duty one, which is what we're looking at here, and then a lighter duty one. And the only, the only thing that I can uh, find that are different between the two are the wheels and tires. This one has got heavy duty artillery, uh, style wheels with hard rubber tires. They're not pneumatic. There's no air in them. And um, uh, the other ones had pneumatic tires, a little bit lighter wheels. So uh, I think that was the lighter duty truck. Um, it's uh, two speeds forward and one reverse with a planetary transmission, which is pretty common of uh, vehicles of this time. This car is not very fast. Your truck is not very fast maybe 20 miles an hour, but it, all these cars feel like you're going faster than that because you're sitting up high and everything is rattling and moving around underneath you. Um, to, to, to kind of show what heavy duty meant back in those days, uh, here is the, this is the timer cover that goes over the timer right here. That's the gizmo that, uh, that um, distributes the spark. T pass that around. <laughs> that's a timer cover today they would make that out of plastic it would float away if you un uh, if you unbolted it from the vehicle that's how light it would be that that piece does nothing except for keep your feet out of the timer area uh they were making sure that uh either you were safe or the timer was safe one or the other that that piece has got away what do you figure five pounds no maybe not that Three, three to five pounds. Yeah, a lot more than plastic. Another kind of co uh, cool accessory. It's not an accessory on this vehicle. This is the way it came. But we always think that uh, we come up with new stuff. This one has a, um, uh, a steering column uh, release where you can swing it away uh, to get into the vehicle easier. If I can. So now you can get in there. There's three pedals on the floor. One's the brake. One is low speed and one is reverse. And the throttle is up here. Spark advance is up here. If you've watched any of these um, explanations on our vehicles, you now know about the spark advance. You have to retard the spark to start it or the car will try to start you and uh, that's not a good feeling uh, and this one when it kicks back it it kicks hard so there's only two cylinders pistons are probably about that big around it's got good compression it does smoke a bit and when i'm, I'm done with the talk i'll i'll give you an option if you want to hang around and, and watch us start it that's fine too if if smoke bothers you then keep your distance it smokes quite a bit but um this lever is your emergency brake you better hope you never have an emergency. And this lever is high gear. That's all it does, just goes into high. You start out in the low gear on the pedal. And then when you've reached all of two or three miles an hour, you let go of the pedal and put this forward and you're in high gear. High gear is simply the uh, engine and the, and the rear end hooking up as one solid unit. Um, that's how they do it. Uh, one of the fun things that we'll do Today is we'll light up the, the um, headlights. This is one of the few cars in the collection that um, 
is set up to just instantly turn on the headlights. There were two options for gas headlights. One was a carbide generator, where it's the tank on, that's, that's vertical on the side of the car. And you would add water to the top tank, and then there would be a, a basket with a screen on the bottom, and you'd put carbide crystals in there. And then underneath that um, would be a trough that would, uh, that would collect the, the water, distribute the water. That's over the carbide crystals. And then underneath everything, underneath the basket, just uh, uh, collects the residue from the carbide crystals as they uh, disintegrate. All right. Carbide crystals, when you add water to them, makes acetylene gas, just like you're using in welding outfits. And um, so that's the carbide uh, generator system. You know, people are a little confused over that when I, some of you will say, what, what is this tank on the side? And I'll say, oh, that's carbide generator. They think that it creates electricity because I've used the word generator, but it doesn't. It creates acetylene gas. And that is simply piped up to the headlights through hoses, right? And is it dangerous? Yes, it is. Um, this car is set up with a Prestolite tank. You guys can't see it, but there's a tank over here mounted to the side, and it's pressurized with acetylene gas. There's a, there's a gauge on the back that tells you how much gas you've got. And um, this is not the official... Um, uh, valve knob, if you will. Uh, we're just using um, a, a tool here that normally would use taps for a tap and die set uh, because we didn't have the, uh, that was missing and we didn't have one. So we're using that. Somebody asked me the other day, how old is the gas in the tank or do, does it have any gas? That's where we started. Does it have any gas in the tank? And we lit the lights to prove that yes, it did. And they said, how old is the gas? I figure 1910. So I doubt if they ever put the, the deeper story on this car. And it is a story I can't, I can't, um, I can't say any of it is true because it's all hearsay. But this was owned by some business or the postmaster who got tired of using a horse. And so they bought this and he got tired of using this faster than he got tired of using the horse. So we went back to using the horse, and this sat in a, a shed or a barn and uh, not used again. I, I've, I've seen articles or pictures of this car in 1950s era magazines, antique car magazines. So it's always been known for the most part. It's an original truck. This, this paint here, this darker red with the, with the pinstriping, if you will, that's all original. On this truck, same with the wheels. Uh, somebody has repainted the fenders and repainted this color red. Looks like it was put on with a brush. Uh, but the material for the seat and and all of that, this is original stuff. Uh, so that makes it kind of cool that you're looking at 1910. I, I like that in a vehicle where they were those barn fresh finds that didn't have to be restored. Uh, we went through an era where people would say, oh, you got to restore, you got to restore this car. We've come out of that era, and now they're saying, oh, leave it alone, leave it alone. You know, they're only original once. And, uh, and I come from that, that uh, school of thought. They're only original once. One is because I'm cheap, and I, I wouldn't want to spend the money on a restoration. But the other is the, the, the vehicle itself or the item itself can tell its own story. You look at dents, you know, you look at a dent right here and you go, now, why is there a dent right here? Well, I can kind of, here's where you crank the car or crank the truck. And if it doesn't start, you just, whatever you had in your other hand, you just give it a fling and it, and it makes a dent. And, uh, and there it is. I mean, you can figure this stuff out. So, um, so what else was I going to say? Oh, this particular truck from Buick is called a plumber's truck or a plumber's wagon. And that's because it has, um, it has these hooks on the side for putting in pipes and carrying them to the workplace. Here they are right here. So it's a plumber's truck. I don't think it was owned by a plumbing outfit. 
Although I've heard that story too, but I don't think I don't. I think that story got generated just because Buick called these plumbers trucks. So um, I kind of think that the first story I ever heard was the postmaster story and delivering mail, and then the second one was kind of a general store owner. I, I don't know if any of them are true or none of them are true. So what do you think? Think we ought to like the headlights? Give it a shot. Who, who, who lit them before? You lit them before? Okay. They're dangerous because it's acetylene gas. If any of you guys have played with acetylene gas in the past, you'll know it's very explosive. Um, there was a gizmo that you could... Uh, yeah, look at everybody move out of the way. Uh, <laughs> this is what you'd have to do to light the headlights, you know, and they do throw out a, a pretty uh, good um, uh, beam of light. Um, they had a gizmo that was a, like a spark plug that would go down right over the, over the, uh, um, the burner tip, and you could turn on the gas from the dashboard and then wait a second, then hit the button and the spark plug would spark and it would light them. But if you waited too long, it would blow the headlight up. So it wasn't a very popular gizmo, but it did exist. Um, I'll let you know when it's, so you'll probably know when it goes. There's no such thing as high beam, low beam. Wait a minute. Go. Yes, and that's what that's what a lighthouse keeper um, would take care of. I was on the restoration crew for the Rockland Breakwater Lighthouse for maybe ten years. Learned a lot about lighthouses. Yep. So there you go. Where's Lewis? There he is. There's Lewis's uh, cigarette lighter. Yeah, actually, the, the, f the flame will go up as you go down the road because air will come in through the holes in the light, and, uh, and it'll, it'll pop up. This, this light over here doesn't do quite as well. We probably have to clean out 